Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk you through how to install solar into your garage or shed or outbuilding. Probably wouldn't work inside a house unless you've got a tiny little house, like some sort of cattle shed conversion in some idyllic, beautiful bit of landscape. But let's face it, you're going to be sticking it in your shed, aren't you? So, the whole project costs about £400 from start to finish. Uh, you'll get everything that you need in there with solar, battery storage, all the cable in, ready to rock and roll. So this garage at the moment is my workshop. I power all my lights, uh, I've got uh, all my power tools, uh, bench saw, grinder, um, all of my power tools are recharged, all from the sun from this £400 setup. So I'm going to take you through where I got it from, how I installed it, and stick some links up on the screen for you so you can see how simple and easy it is. And that's it. So check it out. Oh, like and subscribe. So this is my solar array on the roof of my garage workshop um, on a couple of brackets that hang over the roof but they're bolted to the brickwork just because the roof's not very strong. Um, the cable comes in via an entry gland down the wall onto this sort of motherboard into the eco-worthy solar controller which um, regulates the power into the batteries. There's a circuit breaker there, there's an aftermarket one I've added but not quite fitted it yet. Um, 16 mil cables go from the solar controller into the leisure battery and then again 16 mil back into the inverter from the leisure battery. You need to get yourself some crimps and some uh, battery connectors but I'll go through it now. This is a kit you'll get from Amazon, common sort of kit. You won't get much cable so you'll have to buy extra and you'll have to buy brackets. Um, it will go into the um, solar controller, but you won't get an isolator, so you'll probably need to buy an aftermarket isolator. I went for this one. It's a 50 amp circuit breaker. I went for a 2000 watt inverter. Um, I got it from Argos because they've got a really good returns policy for like up to a year afterwards. So if it breaks, and they often do, then you can take it back. This one's been pretty good, but 2000 watts is really good for peak. Uh, so your power tools, uh, that was an angle grinder, sorry, a bench grinder, but same for a bench saw, very juicy tools, 2000 watts more than enough to run them both at the same time. Um, and 1000 watts continuous, which will do your lights. Um, 105 amp hour leisure battery, I've gone for lead acid. You can have a couple linked in series if you need to, or even um, lithium ion, depends on your budget. Gone for this cheap entry gland, just make sure you always get a drip loop, whatever you do, even if you go straight into the wall, seal it up, but get yourself a drip loop and that'll save you a lot of trouble with your electrics getting wet and frying. Um, get yourself some extra MC4 cable, and this is kind of what it looks like in a basic kit. It's fairly simple to link in series, same for batteries, same for your solar panels. Um, yeah simple stuff if you go for lead acid or lithium ion doesn't really matter as long as you link it correctly and in series so this is a breakdown of costs solar panel and controller kit start at about the 200 pound mark panels and brackets again pretty cheap start at about 10 pounds unless you go for a bit more specialist like i've got 70 quid um leisure battery 95 amp hour is probably your minimum unless you're going to be running some sort of i don't know washing machine in your in your shed or whatever um but you can go for lithium ion if you've got the budget. MC4 cables, four mil, uh, entry gland. Again, not necessarily necessary, but you know, looks better. And then get yourself an aftermarket isolator or circuit breaker. I've gone for a 50 amp. And this is my workshop.